What's up, everybody? We're back with another episode of Puff Puff Planet. Uh, we're going to be breaking down the cannabis packaging label for you today. Uh, the cannabis packaging label has changed a billion times, went under a bunch of different rules and regs throughout the years, had to just dis- display certain things and it might be a little bit overwhelming. At this point, you probably just know, oh, it's got a nice label. I can trust it. But yeah. we're going to help you break down exactly what everything that you're reading means because it has something to do with your dosage, what you're consuming, um, what's inside of it, what effects it could have. Where it came and from. Who dosed everything. it. Yeah. yeah. All that kind of fun stuff. I mean. Yeah. It's a for, good thing. For me in the shop, yeah. I mean, I get a lot of questions too. Like the labels sometimes are hard to read. They're small. What does this mean? Like, and it's kind of funny too because I feel like someone buys a product for like habitually for a long time. And then Mm -hmm. they one day just choose like, I don't know if they're just like, you know, when you read the shampoo bottles Mm -hmm. on the toilet when you're just like bored sometimes. (laughs) I've never read a single shampoo bottle. You have not been bored enough on the toilet. Okay. Well, I know. I guess you'd have to reach the shampoo bottle. I know people relate with me on this one. Okay. I'm not weirdo, but I know you have picked up something in your bathroom and read the back. And then you were like, I didn't know that about this product that I've been using for I don't know I how long. I do that long. with potato chips, actually. Yeah, so there I you go. I want the origin of the family, the potato. So everything. I want the whole family. I'm serious. <laughs> I like, family tree. I like Downey Farms. So I, I feel nice like family. people will be like eating or taking a product in and then they one day just like actually read the label and they come in and they're like, what does this mean? And I'm like, how are you just do they now? Ask too? Like some people will be like, what does that even mean? Right? So like we'll start. Good for them though for asking. Yeah. I, I like mean, that. like you probably could yeah. Google it and figure it out, but it's just mm-hmm. more like you know, easy more mm-hmm. easy it's easier to come into the shop and just ask but the first one and the biggest one thc versus thca percentage mm-hmm. what is that what does that mean people see thca in a package it can be misleading um i think it's most misleading when it comes to like flour mm-hmm. right because thca is the you know acid form of thc that does not get you high in its present form right until mm-hmm. it's decarbed so 13% some, loss of mass. Yeah. So when people come into the shop, I sometimes I get, and this is actually, it starts a, a little bit before the flower hits the retail sto- like shelf. I will get growers that reach out to me and they're like, hey, this strain tests out at 34%. And then I'm like, total cannabinoids, THCA, mm-hmm. THC. And then they're like, THCA. And I'm like, okay, mm-hmm. well, let's like actually tell me what you're Delta nine <laughs> THC yeah. is so that when I put this on the shelf, it's not, you know, it's yeah. Proper. And, and wait, actually you brought up a good point there Confusing. when you put it on the shelf. So it maybe, maybe the point is right because it's not properly displayed, but we will say, we'll give a shout out. I know you'll agree with this. When we say this, we're relating this to like just exactly what we're talking about. So like THCA in itself, yeah, wonderful benefits, just can't get high off DHA, yeah. right? Which, by the way, is why you could eat a bunch of buds. So, like, you're cruising in a car with your boy. You're worried. This is back in the day. I don't know why you'd be doing this unless you're, like, a desperado, right? But I don't know. You're cruising with an amount of weed. You got a bag. You get, like, pulled over. Like, you eat that bag of weed. They're not. You're not going to be like, oh, by eating that yeah, bag of no. weed because you have to smoke that weed in it order to, to get, get a yeah, combustion, to combustion, basically, when you're using a light sort or Light, light source, source, light source. <laughs> a fire Put source. Put light on it, it starts. <laughs> um, yeah, so I don't even know why I got off on that tangent, well, but that, all that stuff is right. Oh, because you can eat the nugs because mm-hmm. in its present yes. form of THCA, it doesn't mm-hmm. get you high, right? There's no psychoactive mm-hmm. properties. However, there's a lot of medicinal properties, like you were saying. So they actually Smoothies, take the THCA can, yeah. and they put it in like capsule forms mm-hmm. and tinctures and stuff. So mm-hmm. God's... Gots a, gots a crystals, lots of crystals, THCA crystals, <laughs> cool diamonds. Benefits. Um, but no, so I, one of the products I'm holding in my hand is the Local Grove. Um, really awesome um, partner of ours in our dispensary. Mm-hmm. You know, good friends of you know some of our owners and grow some dank mm-hmm. weed. Always <laughs> got gonna, some cool strains. We're gonna drop too, yeah. some terms from our last podcast in this. So if you haven't watched that, go watch it. Dank, dank uh, some dank ganja yeah. in my hand right now. Uh, it's this is his hot tamales, but he lists. Uh, you get he, a free pre roll for yeah, that. Yeah, the owner. He lists. Yeah, you get a free pre roll for that. He lists his uh, THCA percentage first, right? So mm-hmm. there's that. It says twenty four point seven nine percent THCA, and the next to that says twenty two point two eight percent THC. Mm-hmm. So that can like confuse the consumer sometimes. Mm-hmm. They're like, do I add those mm-hmm. or? And I'm like, it's a conversion rate, right? Mm-hmm. Like it's like a point eight seven convert an eighty seven percent conversion mm-hmm. rate by the like. When you take your THCA and you kind of multiply it by 0.87, you're going to 
get your Delta yeah. 9 THC. That's kind of the conversion there, right? So like you said 13% loss of max. Yeah. So I tell people all the time, they like to list that because it's also something, I mean, to be proud of, right? Like your yeah. THCA percentage and See, stuff. See, they, it's the expert, right? Like they, even anybody, not they, I'm saying anybody of these people, by the way, that we're talking about that represent these certain numbers, like they're giving you real data. None of this is false. It's yeah. it's the actual it's stuff. Test results. Yeah, and people that are maybe a connoisseur or something of that nature, are like really interested in all those details. This is good info that they will yeah. want to know, and there's nothing wrong with it, right? We're we're kind of you know relating it in terms of like the average consumer. They're getting there, which actually they're really it's getting so there with cannabis. But the average consumer is just learning these things, so. That's why you got to watch our podcast and understand these things. But yeah, yeah, so THCA really is just the precursor to THC before it's decarb. You said that maybe 10 times now. But so if you see that on a product that needs to be like decarbed or heated before like mm -hmm. or ingested, mm -hmm. it means that it's going to convert. So they're being realistic to you heated saying that in its present via form. Combustion. Yeah, heated via combustion. Mm -hmm. In its not present vaporized. form, it is not it's not going to get you high, mm. right? So vaporize it first mm -hmm. um, and then you'll get high. So sometimes like Monster Extracts used to do it and I think they changed their packaging because it was maybe confusing to people, um, but their concentrates, like their THCA, mm -hmm. they used to have the conversion on the box. It was really cool. It would say like 99% nice. mm. THCA times point, it would literally do yes, the formula I times 0.87 that. equals, you know, 86% mm -hmm. THC uh, Delta 9 mm -hmm. or whatever. And so people would always be like, what is that? And I'm like, it's really cool. They actually break down the math for you so yeah, you can understand yeah. it. Uh, but they must have changed it just because it's not as like popular anymore or common anymore. I do got it. You know what? You know what? It. Actually, I am going to give a, and there's no actually, this is totally random, no affiliation on this one, but like, I got to give a shout out to uh, Monster. They've been around for a, for a good long time. They've always been a consistent, I mean, you know what too, earlier yeah. you mentioned MKX, them too, like, there's some brands that have actually stuck around like good for you. Like you've always, you've always made a good play in your market. Come through. And yeah. Like you. And they're medical still and yeah, recreational. Always OG for sure. They're, they care yeah, about they've both They've been around sides. for a while. Absolutely. And they always have, I, man, I've in, in the monster extracts, I've smoked some crazy strains. Yeah. They always have like the wildest the like fun, strains. Yeah, the stuff. stuff. The stuff that comes out. So yeah, yeah. Their shout out, are, shout out to you guys. Um, but okay, so, so, so that breaks percentage. that down a little bit, right? Yeah. Like what you're looking for most of the mm -hmm. time when they come in, they're like, show me the THC. So mm -hmm. that's on there. And we're seeing less and less THC, I think just literally cause it's confusing people. But the next one is CBD percentage. Was, you were so good at disregarding me there. It's like in a good way. Like I just want you to like, let me finish I was like, shit <sighs> real quick. I, I was down. like, as you were saying, I was like, I was like, I need to learn that just now. Like that was good. <laughs> like you didn't even blink an eye. You're like, that's the professional just like. <laughs> Shut up. No, oh, no um, the next one, like you mentioned, CBD, <laughs> mm -hmm. right? People, mm -hmm. uh, when they see this on their package, they're like, I don't want any CBD in my stuff. And I'm like, it just, it's they there. They say that? Yeah. They sound like that. It, like, just like that. Okay. Did and they I'm, say that? Yeah. And I'm like, that's really sad. It makes me sad because I'm like, Hope you know whether they list it or not. It's probably present. Hope you know. <laughs> Hope you know. I think they have to list it yeah. if it's above like 0 .01. Mm -hmm. They have to list yeah. it on the packaging. That's actually, yeah. What is it 0 .01? I'm pretty sure. Interesting. Okay. So if it makes I it up like that enough in actually. that, like they have to list it on the packaging. Mm -hmm. So like local Grove has zero. And, and, and there's people who are like specific growers. They're definitely breeding for that THC. So like they probably have bred out a lot of that CBD out of a product. Real quick too. Like maybe this is popular, but... I didn't even know you brought this. And when I just said that banana punch muffin, pow, sugar by monster. I thought that was funny. That was another, it's a unique it's a strain. one. strain. Yeah. Banana punch muffin. Yeah. They love, read it. they love yeah. all their weird strains, but you know, you'll find some, some CBD on different packaging. I'm trying to look at one of these like, okay, this gummy package has 195 milligrams of THC and 0.4 milligrams of CBD. So like that's a, the most minute amount of CBD, but they, they're required by law to list THC and CBD percentages on packaging. By so, law. By law. Dun, 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 dun. Dun. <laughs> I knew you were coming the same, with that. The same time. Yeah. Okay, so next you'll find on there on some products, I feel like it's more uh, flour and concentrates, but mm -hmm. the total cannabinoids. Yeah. Um, that is literally, sometimes people see CBD, right? And then they see THC next mm -hmm. to it and they add them and they're like, that doesn't add up to the total cannabinoids. And I'm like, there's other cannabinoids that they're not listing that are so minor. Medical. Yeah. That actually it matters. Yeah, and it does. Mm -hmm. All of your cannabinoids mm -hmm. matter, major, minor, mm -hmm. all of them. And why does it matter? Here's why. 
it could matter in different ways <laughs> for different people. Because at the end of the day, some people are just trying to chase a high and that's okay too. The world's crazy. And sometimes we need to just chase a high to feel a little bit better for a few minutes a day. But some people are hitting it medicinally and for them may not taste as good, smoke as good, it may be a little bit harsher, but it has all the compounds of the plant that may come together in synergies and I guess what we would refer to as the entourage effect to potentially help somebody, not claiming it cures anything, but could potentially help somebody in uh, conjunction with other treatments to that they're relief. doing. Yeah. To gain relief, yeah. So you'll so. find total cannabinoids on there. So that just means all the cannabinoids, major and minor, which include THC, include CBD, CBG, CBDA, THCA, all of those mm-hmm. things um, in a plant. So if you see that, it's something other like companies are also proud of. People mm-hmm. who want high total cannabinoids because it just it's a better high. It's an entourage mm-hmm. effect. So it might not be something you might only be interested in that THC, but there are people interested in that total cannabinoid count. Absolutely, and you know where that matters to me most. Actually, um, this is just something that resonated with me lately because I realized I like a uh, couple of different, um, I guess, types of concentrates. And I'll give a shout out to two brands. Actually, um, one the terpene percentage, right? So if you think about the terpene percentage um, on some of the concentrates that you'll see, um, concentrates can range in concentration of, you know, THC, THCA, whatever. Um, And that range is, I would say more, it matters in proportion to like other things. You might see a much lower THC percentage in a certain concentrate that you'd be like, oh, is this lower or less quality? It's not. A lot of the time, some of these have a much higher percentage of terpenes and there's good benefits for each. But uh, I mean, honestly, one of them, Harbor Farms, got to give them credit. They always have great, um, great, good high terpene terpene percentages. That's kind of what they're known for. Another one, no affiliation, but shout out to you guys for doing some good stuff. Well, and you were mentioning, you know, highly of Monster mm-hmm. earlier in this one. You know, here here is a good example. Total THC is 64.39%. Total cannabinoids is 78.38%. Mm-hmm. And they have CBD listed as NA. So not high enough that it needs to be listed, mm-hmm. right? So there's a difference there of 14% for total cannabinoids. Mm-hmm. So you're talking all other cannabinoids found in this. And then their total terpene count is 98 they go down. Da- they go out five decimal points. Nine point eight. They measure zero it. six zero zero percent. You just made me think too about like by the way like NA, NA is so applicable to so it's like a, it's like the best. Yeah, like get like, out of jail. Like, it's like nah. you got to do something. Like you don't know the answer <laughs> to something. You're like fuck NA. <laughs> yeah. Shit. I, well, I think Shit's it's NA. So, well, I think it's so you know? funny though because it kind of too. I read it like nah. I did that today by the nah. way. That's why. Yeah. I had to fill out a spreadsheet and. I was like, I'm going to fill this spreadsheet out and give so much good info. <laughs> and, then NA. and then there was a status column. And I'm like, shit, there's a few I wanted on there that I didn't know about. I was just like, N-A. <laughs> and I got there and I, I felt good about it. I'm like, like it's not applicable, no, don't worry. The shit ain't applicable. <laughs> like, this like, hey, you worried about some shit? Just move on. Shit just, ain't applicable just to you, Just put dude. N-A. Yeah. <laughs> not, Shit's N-A. Not applicable. Shit's um, N-A. But that corrects me up because it, this test for terpenes, 9.8 is, is pretty high. Mm. Um, anything above like that three, four percent terpenes is Pretty impressive. High. That's what I was saying. The Harbor Farms, I've seen like 16, 17, yes. 18, like some well, crazy shit. Well, they breed shit. for terps. And honestly, honestly, I got to give them a shout out to Humblebee too. Yeah. Good, good, they breed good. breed for terpenes. I just, just try. Yeah. I mean, and, and there's a, there's a, there's a billion out there. We'll talk about a bunch more, but well, yeah. Those and are not only just like I've terpene tried. percentage, right? Like some people will, I think it's, it's a cool thing and a step above the rest to just list your terpene mm-hmm. percentage, right? Like you're even proud mm-hmm. of that. But then to go a step further, like our, our friends over at uh, Trap House and three left yeah. they list all the major terpenes in the product so like they I dial love, down they give I you like a total house. terpene content yeah. and then they're like hey this has limonene of 0.47 percent this has lino- is it linalool or linalool i've heard different trap things. house is definitely i'm, I'm going to tell you they're in my top I, I don't even i don't even care to rate all of them individually because my top five for me are just considered all real good definitely in my top five i love them trap i house. actually started trap a trap house earlier than most it's not like, a trap house it's a trap home I love that. <laughs> but a Trap House for me was early on in my concentrate game. And still to this day, I never stop buying them. If I go into a place and see them, I'll buy them. Yeah. Sh- yeah. Shout out to Trap House. Man. But this list, like what the top eight terpenes. Oh, my gosh. This is going to bug the hell out of me. Like the movie you can't remember. Is it a concentrate? Yeah. There was one specific concentrate from, um, from Trap House. And I don't even remember it. But here's the thing. Traditionally, 
I don't so really good. like I don't like so pineapple uh, <sighs> like as a fruit like as much, but like it was pineapple OG. I don't know, but it was one of the originals, and I'm gonna. Yeah, tell that you, is pineapple OG. It was one of the OGs because everyone in the shop it loved pineapple it. Pineapple OG, though, I swear it wasn't pineapple OG. It was. Um, it was one of my favorites. It was like one of the best uplifting. Yes. Pineapple that I've ever had. No, I'm gonna re- I'm gonna bring it back and I'm remember. Um, it was everyone's favorite. It was a really good sativa. Yeah. The terpene content was high. It was like a nice and that gold, billboard. like beautiful color. Oh, their artwork that they put their out of that place. Is like sick. Yeah. I'm like, are you a cannabis company or yeah. are you just making art? Yeah. That stuff's pretty no, that's pretty damn cool. That, that, Check out our billboards with them. A lot of them in yeah. Flint. Trap house is we a love great our partner. we love Thank our guys you. over here. Um, but you know terpenes. Uh, terpenes. Anyway, back to that. So they they list their top eight terpenes. Um, our other really good friends at Freshy Fine, Freshy Fine. who put out some fire stuff. They got new packaging. Check it out. On their we just took a new packaging. Yeah, they got new packaging <laughs> on their cards recently. Um, so it's super super attractive packaging here. But they list their terpenes, and what's really cool about uh, the Freshy Fine mm-hmm. is they have their own single source in house source terpene library. Mm-hmm. So they sort, they like go in and extract their own terpenes from mm-hmm. their specific strains that they're growing. Yeah. Then they have like a, like a library where they have all these like terpenes and like jars and then they use their own terpenes to create their concentrates and their infused joints. Good for them. That's so it's all single source, like all the flour, yeah. all the concentrate that comes in. Like it's not like people will be like, they're cannabis terpenes, yeah. which they may be, but they're not in-house sourced. Yeah. You know what I like about this? This is what's cool. When we talk about this stuff, I, I am so glad that recently it was so funny. I've been in like the processing and concentrate part of the world for geez, five years now. And up and even up until about two years ago that I really start like really loving concentrates. Everybody does this slightly different thing and they each have their own little niche and all of them are really good. Yeah. It's like a craft beer. You it's don't so have cool. one take over another. Like you have enough, you, you do a good enough craft where you have enough consumers where all your damn products sell great because people like to enjoy them. Well, and like like you increase just, consumer use. For everyone. Yeah. So the fresh you find is like those carts are their CO2 carts, but nonetheless, terpene library in house and you'll see like under their strain mm-hmm. they list the terpenes that they they fuse together to make that you had strain. me at candy cake candy cake sounds good as hell yeah and then it tells you his two crosses under it motor breath and candy cake but candy cake sounds good yeah yeah and not all people list the terpenes so no. if you see something that doesn't that doesn't mean that it's bad or that they don't have it but well not all list terpenes yeah. it's a it's a more expensive test to run it on is. your product so to me it kind of indicates a company that cares more about the, like the whole plant mm-hmm. process and like everything that they're doing. Cause mm-hmm. terpenes do matter and they are important mm-hmm. and they're spending extra money out of their pocket to not only test for terpenes, mm-hmm. but list it on their packaging, yeah, which absolutely. can cause more costs for packaging. Mm-hmm. But to just take that extra step and be like, we care. Like we, mm-hmm. we want you to know this is a quality product and this is what's in it because like terpene preservation and terpene, like in the process of like mm-hmm. making concentrates, terpene preservation is like, pretty hard to do. And Mm -hmm. I feel like it's easy to just be like, screw the terpenes and we'll just like make distillate. Right. Mm -hmm. Or whatever. So it's really cool to see like products come to the market where they're listing terpenes on them. Like you'll find in those more like mature markets, pretty much everything has terpenes listed on it. And people in Colorado will come in being like, I want a limonene heavy concentrate. Mm -hmm. They don't go, I want a sativa or I want. (laughs) Yeah. They're like, that's a super mature market too. I I love your, I want limonene in my concentrate. I I want limonene in my concentrate. Uh, Could you have some lemonade? (laughs) Like grape or barn. At a a 7% concentration. Um, But yeah. So anyway, that's terpenes. You'll find and remember, listen. though, all of them have a place, though. So, like, funny, yeah. remember, it goes back to what you're chasing. Yeah. So, at the end of the day, um, if you have really high THC and somebody recepts to that, great, great, they have them. Also, milligrams of other things and other, other you know, uh, yeah, other things, <laughs> other parts of the plant that could have a medical benefit, but maybe not as just a psychoactive. So, it's all about what you chase. But when you do see terpenes, Um, You will find them sometimes in either milligrams or percentages. You can feel free to Google and look at how you convert all that and figure it out by the way to the blah, blah, blah. But and to like if you you smoke a concentrate or a flower that you love, I always suggest Googling the strain and looking at Mm -hmm. its terpene profile, because if you find similar strains with that similar terpene profile, you're going to get a similar high, similar effect, similar relief. So like keep finding the stuff that works for you. And it's not even just 
works for you for pain relief. It's what gets you that high that you freaking mm-hmm. enjoy. Shout know? out to Leafly, honestly. Yeah. You know who does that well? Big like for out. real. Yeah. Like an, um, Leafly has like, when you, when you Google search strains and Google, uh, Leafly has yeah, probably the most the like well-known overall uh, definitions of strains, which a lot of people use for their online presence. Yeah. Yeah. Not like the best ordering platform, I'll mm. say, but the best informational mm. platform for cannabis. Absolutely. I think that there's like the most... The biggest database of mm-hmm. info is on Leafly. Absolutely. Um, okay, then moving into something that I've been asked a few times in dispensary, which is like not a huge thing, but something that the state started requiring them to put on packaging was plus a ten per, plus or minus a ten percent variance. Um, I think that the exact wording is on here on some of these products. Still less than the weather people. <laughs> yeah, still less than <laughs> fucking it may thirty forty percent. It's gonna snow today. It's like Hawaii. But all that means is that like in the testing process, there might be like a plus or minus 10% variance in the THC potency yeah. of any of that. And that they're, sounds they're scary where you're like 10%, but it's like you're allowed that variance yeah. because like the testing is so finicky mm-hmm. on like a per piece base and everything. Yeah, which is fair too, because like these machines are testing very accurately, you know, based on a sample size, what is in the exact dose or piece that you're taking. But um, there's always going to be a slight variance in it, no matter what. Like if we don't have to measure certain things, though, think about it. Like this is a psychoactive drug that we have to measure on a label. So, for example, if you took like, it doesn't even matter, a tomato, if there's a certain vitamin in a tomato, does it really matter if it's plus or minus certain percentage of that, right? There's going to just be a small variance yeah. regardless. Yeah, and I think, like, so the actual They're held to a standard, though. Yeah, actual THC and CBD values may vary from the reported values by 10%. Mm-hmm. So it's it's just, it's all legal. I think it's just to cover everyone's butt. But at the end of the day, I've had people ask me, like, what does that mean? Does that mean this could actually be 20% THC instead of 30 or 10% instead of mm-hmm. 20 And I'm like, no, the, the chances of it being that high of a discrepancy are, are, are little. But because you're taking from sample sizes... That's something to keep in mind that they, they they put that there as like a blanket statement. Except for one scenario that you forgot. So you should all be thankful about that plus or minus 10% thing that we just said. It could be plus. No, no. The reason <laughs> being is because back in the day when you had that stupid experience with an edible from your buddy, your buddy was plus or minus a thousand percent in the brownie <laughs> that he baked in his freaking pot with some butter and some weed from a bag that he measured with a scale from not Amazon because it wasn't even existed at that time. So this scale, it's that, that shit was, oh, here's 20 milligrams. Yeah, here's 2000 milligrams. Not he really. He had no like, idea. But that's what I'm saying. That's how many people have bad experiences. I still have no idea when I'm making edibles at home. That's why I'm saying. I know I have ways like, to know, but I'm just like. They have machines like with the magic butter. Like, That's a good eat one. Eat at your own caution. Yeah. Eat at your own. <laughs> I just put mix this in a. Did we ever tell that about the, um, what did you make those oat <laughs> things? The cheesecake cups? Um, the ch- yeah. Yeah, the cheesecake cups. You have the wedding. medicated versus non-medicated? Yeah. Oh, so I had an employee who I, I love to bake and, and stuff, and I make like a like a no-bake cheesecake. And I had a um, employee of ours who was getting married, and he said, I want Are you to make- Are we allowed to say this? Yeah. Okay. I don't think he cares. <laughs> yeah. I hope not. Less. I want you to make a um, cheesecake, like an infused cheesecake mm-hmm. cup. And I was mm-hmm. like, yeah, sure. Let's like, I'm happy to do that. Mm-hmm. And so I made, they're like, we want non-infused and infused because we have, you know- uh, people coming to our wedding that don't don't consume THC. I said, sure. So I made like a pretty decent batch of the infused ones and a larger batch of the non-infused. And I made sure to wrap them with like a green ribbon. And I put like a I remember. Like label on the top that was like, they were, great. They were only 10 milligrams a piece. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I was nice. I wasn't like, I'm going to, and load, and I dosed them out individually. Mm-hmm. So I knew each one was 10 milligrams a piece. And um, I put them on the table. I put a sign that said, there was like actually three signs leading up to the cups. And it was like, stop. First one. And then it's the second the one said, and Yeah. <laughs> and then the next one was like, caution. And then the next one was like, these have THC yeah. in them. Don't eat them unless you want to be high, right? You needed like a blinking red light, like, gold. That just reminded me of Golden Eye on yeah. 64 for some <laughs> So I, I put these things out. And the then hell I'm am I like, talking be, about? Be, Jesus. Yeah, where are you at over there? So I'm like, be careful with all these. For 99. <laughs> Point nine percent of individuals there, they picked the right cup. There was like a one in. There were two individuals that 
picked the wrong color. What happened to the point one of that man that didn't pick the wrong? Yeah. What happened to that? <laughs> you said 99.9. That point one dude. Like, yeah. what's, <laughs> so he, what's going on in his yeah, he, yeah, he had like, you know, yeah. point one. But anyway, we had the two people at the party that grabbed the wrong cup. Mm-hmm. And one was having a fantastic time and was like, I've never slept better. <laughs> and like, to Don't win, grab the wrong like, cup. They went and, and it was nice because this wedding was at like on their family property. Yeah. So one went inside and took a nap mm-hmm. and like enjoyed the like mm-hmm. living heck out of it. And then the other one was like, I'm dying. <laughs> and so it was really um, opposite uh, effects of people. And, you know, I did, I, Never intended for her to not be well and eat one of my cups. No bad but, intentions. Um, I tried to put mm-hmm. as many kinds to signs, right? Like as I could. I Proper did, signage. I, you did your thing. I did as much as I could, but did I did thing. accidentally, I, I, not through me, you know, but they, they were, accidentally they were, they were drugged good. themselves. They were good. You couldn't taste the weed in them. So like, I don't blame them for like, not, I mean, that's why, here's the thing. When people are like, I want edibles that don't taste like weed. I'm like, that's scary. <laughs> Like I want to eat something and be like, that tastes like weed. Like weed. Because it happened to me about four months ago. I went to a party and I'm standing at the table, which this was rude, right? There were no signs or nothing. There I went to a party and they had all their desserts and apps and stuff mm-hmm. on one table. And so I have a kryptonite and that is peanut butter cookies. Okay. So I went to the table and I I'm like, there is this box of homemade peanut butter cookies. And I was like, I don't remember the last time I had a homemade peanut butter cookie. I'm at the table. I eat one. I eat the whole thing, right? And then I'm middle of eating like the second one. I'm like no three green quarters, ribbon. No nothing. I'm three quarters away through eating this, right? Mm-hmm. And then one of the girls I have not met yet at this party casually walks up and she goes, "Oh, introduce herself." I'm like, "Oh, nice to meet you." And she goes, as I'm inserting the last piece of the cookie in her mouth, she goes, "You know those are um, those are edibles." Dun, dun, and I'm dun. like. I'm like, do I spit it in my hand or do I just swallow it? Right. Mm. And then she's like, I made them. And I was like, I'm going to swallow it. Mm -hmm. So then I look at her, I'm like, um, I didn't know that. And here's the thing. I had been on a tolerance break and I hadn't had edible in like two years because I'm scared. And so I looked at her and I said, how much uh, is in this? Mm -hmm. And she goes, I'm not really sure. Famous last words. And I was like, a, she was honest. Right. And then B, I immediately was like onset the panic attack because I was I was really worried. But fast forward like an hour and a half and I just was playing Uno on the floor, forgetting it was my turn for that. like twenty minutes. Yeah. Which which is actually fast forward, I was playing Uno. <laughs> fast which forward, you know what? That's, that's actually, the coolest party ever. <laughs> that is the perfect segue into Understanding what your package dose is. Yeah, and your oh, serving size. What a perfect segue. <laughs> Uno. So package dose, so you don't end up hallucinating and think you're playing Uno, is how much you're taking. So Well, the package dose is the the entire dose in the package, right? So yes. what is this whole... So recently, uh, right. adult use, so recreational products and edibles went to 200 milligrams per package. They were always 100. So mm-hmm. recently they went to 200, so... You could say a package dose or a package size dosage is 200 milligrams mm-hmm. now for most edibles. Some are still 100. And then you have a serving size. So by the state of Michigan, a serving size must be 10 milligrams. So you can't have more than 10 milligrams in one serving. So say you have some of these packages have a gummy that's 20 milligrams mm-hmm. on their back. If you read, it'll say serving size. Two. Half a gummy. I know math. <laughs> for gummy. I came in and I said two. <laughs> you said I want two. And I said that's four servings. But um so they'll have they're legally required to list the serving size and it must be equal to 10 milligrams. So some companies will just list the serving size as a half a gummy and some will choose to put these like crazy diagrams. Oh, where's the camera? Crazy diagrams that are like, oh, you have one gummy, it's <laughs> got to be a million cuts to it. So this is what is that though? That's a four times 50. So see yeah. on the front, you got to look, no, on the front, they'll say four times 50. That it means, shows you four squares. That means four fifty slabs. I'm sorry. I had to say <laughs> that to be cool. Let me tell you why Lauren said this to me one day. She's like, you want a 50 slab? I'm like, what am I in a biker gang? You're trying to like <laughs> yeah. pressure me into a, sl-. she's like, you want a 50 slab? Like, I was honestly like, tell, what, what, I was like, what, what the hell is a 50 slab? <laughs> she's like 50 milligrams. I'm like, oh geez. Okay. Yeah. Well, I okay. <laughs> 
when did you learn to call it a 50 slab? <laughs> Where like, did I you find like that I was like, term? Yeah, I felt like I was like, geez, I was out of the, the loop. But anyways, so four times 50. So uh, there's 200 milligrams yeah, in the package. Put it on the back. But then on the back, there's a little diagram, and it'll actually so, show you slicing you can't divide. each 50 <laughs> slab into five slices, yeah. and then it'll tell you the percentage, you know, the dosage piece on that. But Division. The vision. Um, something like this, too, I think the hardest thing to dose if you're not like just ready to eat 100 milligrams or even like half at 50, like baked goods. If you're not ready, you act like, <laughs> you just said it like it's like a second step. You're like, if you're not at 100 milligrams yet a weekend. If you're not there yet. So wait, wait, we need a disclaimer on you that. Will be. You might not be at that for a long time. It's okay. Yeah. So if you're not going to eat. Honey, I found this podcast and it said to try 100. <laughs> if you're not ready to eat I don't know why the 100 milligrams, voice, I don't know, but that, is that what that uh, demographic sounds like? Get loony. This yeah. one has a diagram, right? And it says a serving size is 1 20th of a square. So you'd have to like take this out of the bag and like. How much very, is a square? Oh, wait, that's a. So this crispy. is a hundred. This is two hundred milligrams in the whole thing. So it's saying you have to cut this whole crispy into twenty pieces to get one serving size. Who goes home and like nicely slices their baked good? And when you first said it, you're, you're like, you're just like, I'm gonna bite it. You have to cut this crispy into <laughs> twenty pieces. I was like, how would you do such a thing? Oh, I do not have a twenty piece slicer at uh. home. But no. Quick, Amazon, I need a 20 piece slicer on Prime. It's 20, gonna, dude, there's probably at like your a, house before you like even get your stamp. wallet out. Yeah. Well, so it's, it's interesting. I always caution people. I'm like, okay, if you're not, if your dose is 10 milligrams, like this doesn't make sense. Like it doesn't. Mm -hmm. And companies have come out and tried to make like 10 milligram bites of brownies and Rice Krispies, but they just don't sell. So I'm like, you know, if you're going to go in for the Rice Krispie or whatever, you might as well just. Eat whatever you can. Might as well get the fruity by Tree Tree Town because that's another shout out. That shit has been around for a while. I love that. Tree Town has been around forever. That fruity, the Rice crispy treat is good as hell. It is so good. Um, um, so test method. Yeah, we'll test, go down to that. Test so facility. All outside of serving size, we're getting so off track here. But outside of serving size, that's, package dose, and okay. a per piece dose, we have test facility and test date found on the packaging. So we always say to all of our customers, like these pack, everything in the store is tested. And so they're actually able to look on the back of the packaging and see at what test facility in the state was it tested at and on mm -hmm. what date was it tested at. And it's usually tested on a date after it's packaged or not packaged, after it's produced or after it's like harvested. Um, so that's something that is at your guys's fingertips, your knowledge, you want to look up that testing facility, you're not sure. A lot of companies too will do like a QR code that you can scan that'll take you right to what they test call results, like yeah. test results or COA or whatever. So certificate of analysis. I thought it was certificate of authenticity. Uh, analysis. <laughs> or well, this I mean, is, no, it, it's, it's analysis. It's analysis. But, but I mean, like, in theory, you're not wrong. Crispy. Yeah. <laughs> that would be more like on Pawn Stars where you're like, I got this gold from a pirate ship. That would be like a certificate of authenticity. I don't know why the fuck I thought Let of that. Let me call but. my guy to check on that. Yeah. <laughs> call yeah. him. I'm going to call my one. Rice Krispie yeah. guy. <laughs> This yeah, is a one. real Rice Krispie treat. And, uh, you know, that test date too, that test date, you know, uh, without going into detail, whatever, there's like the test date, the harvest date. You got to remember uh, the harvest date. I've had people ask me this before. They're like, oh, the harvest date was like three, four months earlier, blah, blah, blah. Like, dude, like this ain't from like farm to lungs with like a single day. Okay. Like there's, there's <laughs> like a, from but, farm, it comes off the farm into your lungs as you smoke it. But it's like, not, imagine it's, if it, you're you know. like, products at the store like your hot cheetos had a packaging date like a like a harvest date like when these you'd be like oh my god <laughs> these were made seven years ago yeah. <laughs> this mcdonald's burger was 12 seven years old years. <laughs> they, nothing ages anymore but you've got test really test date the next thing is harvest date you find harvest date primarily on all flower products mm -hmm. pre-rolls and, mm -hmm. and stuff like that we're required to list them on like our deli style flour in our stores or you find them on pre-pack eights or whatever is pre-packaged um that is when they chopped that weed down and harvested it and in the state system moved it from one room to the next, right? So there's still a curing process that needs to happen. Mm -hmm. There's still a trimming process and a testing process. And so people see weed and they're like, Everything. this was, like you said, three months ago. And you're mm -hmm. like, 
Dude, that's still fresh. It's so super, super <laughs> yeah. fresh. And 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 not to mention too, like we're not even getting into that in this episode, but there's people that like do craft stuff. They cure for a certain amount of times, and, and again, whatever. It's, everybody's got their own thing, but like there's different. Like people will argue there's certain strains that can cure and sit for yeah. certain amounts of time that feel better. So um, there's that, and then yeah. you have production date, which is what you find on most mm-hmm. of like your. Um, anything that's not raw flour, so like edibles and concentrates, this is when it was produced, when it mm-hmm. was like tr- made into that product, when mm-hmm. it was made into that brownie or that Rice Krispie or that gummy in the facility. So like, again, your harvest date of that of the flour that is used to make that product might be one day, mm-hmm. and then it was produced on a later date. So people always come in and they're like, that doesn't, what's the production date? So the production date is when that product is made. The packaging date is when it was put in its final packaging. So might have been produced on the 1st of October and then put in a package on the 16th of October because it takes, a, you know, maybe they're waiting on packaging. Maybe mm-hmm. they're sending the product. They have to send the product to testing before it can be thrown in a package or whatever. And so. most of these people that we're talking about take proper care of their cannabis during that times. It can be stored in many der- or many various different ways. Dairy. And <laughs> yeah, many various different ways and kept to have the same benefit. So, uh, you know, people like nowadays, we, especially in Michigan, we have a mature market. A lot of the people know, I mean, storage considerations, that's that's extremely important. So yeah. um, we'll move on. Uh, we're going to wrap up here in a minute. So we got um, a few things that yeah, they're so, confused mm-hmm. about that are just more... Mm-hmm. More numbers. like for us, more numbers that don't like if you look in the back of your package, there's like source batch and transfer batch and metric number. And you might be like, what are these long numbers? All that is is just the state tag that was assigned to this product so that the state can track Tracking. it from seed to sale. Mm-hmm. They want to track this product from when it was planted in the ground to when it leaves our door in your hands. Um, so the source batch would just be the batch that it came from at the facility. The transfer batch is what they transferred to us on. So when they they break off a bit of that, so they grow 200 pounds, they send me five pounds. They take that five pounds, put it on a new tag, and they send it to me. So now they can track it on its own new individual journey. Um, so its those are, own little pathway. Its own pathway. Just chill. Oh, the places you'll go, my yeah. Dr. Seuss. Um, so that's, that's kind of what that's for. It's all kind of legal jargon. <laughs> I don't know. Activation I've never been able time? To use that word. Yeah. I'll give you I'll give okay. you the last last. So so check it out. Well actually last, we'll just skip last. ahead to give you the last last. So the producer <laughs> licensee is just the person that produces it or the license whatever, right? Um but so activation time. Activation time is the most important. Packages will put very generalized activation times per whatever data they get, right? Um it's not the most regulated thing in the world, but it is required to put certain things. So um, activation time varies for everybody. For example, uh, there's people I know that it kicks in in 15 minutes when you have an edible. It takes me about two hours. There's people that get high immediately or a few minutes later off smoke and flour. It's uh, kind of to each their own. So just yeah. consider that. That's the one thing I would say like on packaging, don't necessarily just look at the brand's recommended dosage, do your research, talk to friends, watch our podcast or do other research and, you know, figure it yeah, out for so yourself or experiment and be some open of these, to it. You know, this uh, choice to uh, shout out to choice, by the way, mm-hmm. we are huge partners with them. Uh, they got a lot of brands under their belt, but choice is one of our biggest partners. Um, their activation time on their traditional edible, say 30 to 45 minutes. Right. And then the next one here says five to 25 minutes. And these are their fact asking, uh, fast acting, asking, uh, <laughs> quickie gummies. In here, this looks cool. Dynachem. Dynachem. Like That's a pre-roll by Rare, but what's funny is like nice. the activation time on that. Do you see how it says five oh, minutes the, and you're under packaging. your palm? Yeah, I haven't seen this before. Most flower says immediate. Yeah, I like this the pre-roll says five minute activation time, which mm-hmm. is like me. I like take ten minutes to like feel the high from flower. I wish I had a five minute activation time on edibles. That'd be great. On on edibles, that would be literally takes awesome. like two. Some I people have like a, a day before. Minutes. So, but you know that's well, that's breaking down packaging mm-hmm. labels. I mean, I know we threw some uh, tangents in on there, but for the most part, it's all pretty simple, pretty self explanatory. Great tangents. If you ever have any questions? Best tangents ever. Don't ask us. No, I'm just kidding. Ask me at the shop. Ask my staff. Never feel if you see something on a label or a package when you go into a dispensary you should always feel comfortable asking about it, right? You're putting this product mm-hmm. in your body. You're curious. Get the answer. Mm-hmm. Um, lots of places online, our podcasts, our stores. So with that, we'll just wrap this one up. I'm sorry. Just really My hand motions. Unconsciously, <laughs> when you said that, I go, internally, I go, mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 I was laughing. Okay. 
Cheers, everybody. Have Thank a good you. One.